structures. Uh, if you go around, this kind of tech Müller group, with, uh, monodromic group will exit. And this uh, autopological strict theory says that we can quantize this Lagrangian cone. Cano uh, there is some canonical quantization to some wave function um, equivalent in respect to this group. And uh, yeah, so the, uh, mm, and there is uh, now mm, uh, this is equivalent to say what's called BCOV equations. It's not clear a priori one one should have some kind of preferred solution uh, from uh, uh, physics point of view because you get just equations, but they don't. They eventually said it's a kind of holomorphic expression, um, but uh, a priori it's not. Uh, uniquely defined, and uh, there are various kind of algebraic tools uh, which uh, I started something like 10 years ago, and then Kevin Castella uh, uh, succeeded. We have rigorous mathematical definition for what to do with compact three dimensional Calabi-Yau threefold. It's still not, uh, uh, not in a form which we can present to physicists to get a good formula, but at least it's uh, something which theoretically should work. Uh, yeah, there is a similar story, which is not yet complete mathematically, what to do with non-compact Calabio uh, threefolds. Mm, yeah, there are kind of local Calabio threefolds. And in this case, you get la not Lagrangian cone, you get kind of curved Lagrangian submanifold in uh, uh, something like which version of third cohomology. And mm, mm, uh, here, mathematically, we don't have uh, n n enough tools, but uh, what I explained today is that Hrlomovka anomaly of uh, in Aron Arantan gives us a quantization of this Lagrangian submanifold uh, for, for, uh, for non-compact varieties related to spectral curves. Yeah. Oh, oh, maybe I'll just... Uh, do you have in mind some finding some spectrum or something? Not spectrum, no, 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 it's not spectrum. This uh, wave function is it's just a really formal expression. It's kind of holomorphic function in x domain in x variables and uh, nothing about unitarity. Uh, yeah, that's it. Where I can find the razor. Ah, no, I see. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Maybe it's below. No. Ah, yes, there's one. No. Ah, no, no. Bring another one from the Yeah, okay. So this is a general question, how one can quantize Lagrangian submanifold and what uh, extra data is needed. And what we propose with Young, it's very simple ansatz, which we call a restructure. Suppose, uh, uh, let's say I do uh, this situation, I get two-dimensional space, and assume that L is given by a system of uh, equations h1 equal to 0 up to hn equal to 0 uh, because it's n dimensional gives should give by an equation and hi are polynomials of degree of degree at most 2 in x and, uh, in affine space and they closed under Libre Poisson bracket Yeah, and this we called by definition a classical area structure. I'll explain why area in later. There's a bunch of n polynomials with two invariables, close in the Poisson bracket. And I claim in this case one gets absolutely canonical quantization of this Lagrangian uh, manifold. Mm. How how we do it? <coughs> uh, 
har igen erkendt øh, øh, so at big, uh, let's me pick some point of your uh, for simplicity of my Lagrangian manifold take a tangent space and split uh, take a, a, a complementary Lagrangian subspace so we choose some coordinates x and y in this way so the uh, uh, Lagrangian manifold looks like y equal to x square roughly yeah then we can assume that h i of the form minus sum over minus y i plus sum over l i j k x j c Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then it means that you can write basis of my uh, uh, system of questions this form. Could I just answer? Are you assuming just one Lagrangian leaf? Or just one Lagrangian. There's no Lagrangian fully. Just one Lagrangian manifold. Ish. Yeah. Because I, we c I cannot put this equal to other constants because they are not Poisson commute. I will not get. The, re the rest will, they do not pass on commute. They form leaf. They close on the Poisson bracket. Ah, they don't pass on. Yeah. So it means that. That means that you get some kind of this Poisson bracket is linear combination, so certain G I J K. They form some Lie algebra. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so I can write in this way. So if, uh, I form a sub subalgebra in uh, uh, in. Uh, it's Li subalgebra in what? In, you can see the polynomials of uh, uh, on v of degree most two. They close on the Poisson bracket. Uh, by the way, um, the structure constant will be skew symmetrization of this uh, uh, tensor B. I, I was slightly uh, wrong. Uh, just a second. H I. Uh, if I maybe put up indices, just maybe okay. a second. Yeah. Mm. The form of Lisa algebra, but this uh, but this algebra is, is uh, uh, for polynomials of degree two. Uh, mm, th yeah, this algebra has in general this things has basis one x y x square x y y square. You can get this uh, uh, if you put various indices, you get basis of algebra of polynomials of degree. It must do, and that now uh, you can see the just one place is h h dx x square, and you can see the h dx kind of symmetrized uh, product <coughs> here. Maxim, just for notation, the, the third term should have lower j upper k. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right, yeah, Andrew. All right, yeah. Uh, the, the, the last also. The last is, yeah. yeah so with two equal well, well, yes, two No, uh, no, no. But they are all uh, lower. Ah, yes, you're right, yeah, yeah. M, M better is, sorry, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so you get uh, three tensors, and uh, you get certain equations that this thing satisfy, satisfies uh, a Lie bracket. But the, uh, the observation, it's. Uh, um, uh, really uh, trivial. So if you uh, consider Uh, um, 
you can see this is subalgebra with bracket is given by commutator divided by uh, uh, over h bar for for this uh, quadratic product. It's, it's the same Lie algebra. Yeah, yeah. So it means that you automatically for each value of h bar uh, get Lie algebra acting. If you just replace h by hat by replacing uh, uh, um, by quanti quantizing and here we can consider more yell quantization we symmetrize in, in uh, this term we get the same we, we get again Lie algebra of uh, differential of differential operators and now we consider the following module we consider instead of this system equation we write this equation is h i hat of psi is equal to zero mm. Uh, the clay, that's it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a completely trivial uh, remark. And what I claim, you get a really flat deformation. So the size of the module will not change uh, if you put parameter h bar. Uh, and the reason is the following. It's, um, when you write this equation, what you do, you consider uh, uh, this real algebra <coughs> tensored by put each bar parameter inverse algebra of uh, universal algebra of this uh, uh, thing generated by H it's uh, subalgebra multiplied by one dimensional representation by trivial representations of the algebra and it looks like function of half of variable and the quotient will be uh, 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 will have the size f as a function on deformed functions on Lagrangian submanifold yeah so it's complete Complete triviality, I have to say. But so this is really just canonical quantization. It's canonical quantization, yeah. yeah that's but it. Yeah. Do you normal orders? Yeah, not, uh, yeah, it's kind of symmetrized, normal, yeah, normal ordering. Yeah. Yeah. So, so when you write x, y, it's x to the left of what? Yeah, it's, it's, it will be one half uh, x dx and plus dx times x. It's symmetrized. Uh, I will go to symmetrized product. Yeah, so we get uh, absolutely canonical object, and uh, yeah, first kind of first origin of the name Airy is the following. Uh, for example, we can consider just this expression: algebra will be abelian. Uh, then we write equations that h of uh, the derivative is equal to, quad to quadratic polynomial, and you see that it's a um, mm, Fourier transform of exponent of cubic polynomial. So it's uh, and mm. so it's for example a function. It's the simplest example. Mm. Mm. Okay. I don't know if you really want a Hilbert space structure, but no, no. So you don't okay. care if the operators are. No, no, no it's it's all in a. Uh, 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 mm. Yeah, for example, uh, 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 when you split coordinates, what you, you get this. S will be analytic functions on axis, uh, no reality condition. Um, and here uh, there is something already kind of pretty tricky. Uh, when you write this model, again, you, when you split coordinates, it means that you can write psi uniquely is exponent of 1 over h bar is 0 plus blah, blah, blah. A 0 will be cubic, polyn a zero will be, mm, cubic polynomial with coefficients a, i, j, k. And uh, and the and the rest yeah, is defined up uh, up to constants uniquely. And then if consider uh, equations what uh, what is Taylor coefficients of term S S G, it's ex expressed for some previous things, and when it expresses previous things, you get a tensor which is a priori not symmetric, but a posteriori we know that it's symmetric because it's uh, wave functions. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's all kind of mystery that you get. Uh, symmetric uh, expressions in uh, um, um, topological recursion actually uh, come from uh, this simple algebraic fact, uh, which is not so simple, <laughs> I have to say. Yeah, yeah I said that it's uh, trivial, but it's, uh, if you look on combinatorics, it's, uh, it looks kind of really puzzling that you get symmetric. Uh, I think it's. Um, and Yeah, so that's a uh, basic framework to get canonical quantization. You should get a bunch of quadratic polynomials and check 
the closed and the person break. Now I'll explain how uh, this can be applied to mm. so eventually Calabria varieties. Yeah. Me, before you do that, uh, do you know that you have, you have an exact solution, Psi, or you just have a solution term by term in, uh, in powers of H? Yeah, it's in the form of power series. Of course, you get different D modules. You can say that you, you can get also a unique. Uh, ah, no exact solution you don't get because it's uh, uh, when you get differential equation. Uh, the question how you normalize this um, it will be WKB solution yes. but not uh, not a, it will be uh, really all on the lo form power series here yeah, it's nothing so you don't know if you really because this as H i is there there are differential operators of degree 2 so yeah so you, you no you can write the equation but it will have many solutions it's it's, it's, it's only, uh, only one, uh, one yeah because uh, mm -hmm. this Lagrange manifold if project trace coordinates will have different branches it will be different WKB solutions uh, somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, so in principle, this L is kind of complicated algebraic variety given by system of quadratic equations, but it could be very complicated. Yeah. Now I will do the following situation. Suppose I get uh, a complex surface, complex surface of uh, this uh, symplectic form. So it will be holomorphic symplectic form. Uh, it's just on zero uh, everywhere. Uh, uh, you can try to think that S is cotangent bundle to some uh, curve, or let's see, C star cross C star, and to take um, kind of trigonometric uh, form, and. Uh, uh, and it will be something uh, kind of which re remains this case. And I assume that I, I have a holomorphic foliation. One dimension, because I have two dimensions, only one possible rank one foliation. Yeah, so what does it mean? That I, so it means that locally it looks like cotangent bundle and foliation by uh, cotangent fibers. I have locally coordinates x and y, so that form is dx h dy, and foliation given by x is constant. Leaves of foliations are vertical leaves. Uh, the same one can do in C star cos C star, but it will be not globally cotangent bundle. Mm. Yeah, so that's uh, surface, uh, and now we construct certain Mm. Interesting space. I'll call something like disks of surface. It will be infinite dimensional space. Uh, I consider a set of uh, kind of germs, uh, pieces of holomorphic disks, which can surface, uh, which Tangent to foliation once at one point. Tangent to F at one point. And tangency, order of tangency, it's the simplest one, first order of tangency. Yeah. Yeah, so I got this infinite dimensional space. Mm. So, the, so the various things, it's this, this space of disks is locally embedded as Lagrangian submanifold in some symplectic space. Some infinite dimensional affine symplectic space. Some like H, some big H. Uh, what is this infinite dimensional symplectic space? Mm, suppose I have one disk, yeah? Mm, uh, then uh, I. Yeah, so topologically I have certain disk, kind of, in, in, 
here draw kind of real picture, but actual complex picture is a disk. And I remove a neighborhood of tangency point. I get uh, embedded annulus uh, to my surface. And annulus is embedded transversely to the foliations. Embedded annulus. Uh, and annulus is not parameterized. Yeah, so embedded annulus, transversal to foliation. Uh, and it's uh, uh, the space of annulus. Uh, if you have annulus, transversal to foliation, uh, you see that we get locally these coordinates, and one can try to integrate of the disks one form y dx, and let's put conditions that y integral of y dx is equal to zero. Now, so you can see the space of annuli uh, satisfying this condition. And uh, all the same if you make some two-dimensional chain with boundary and annulus, the integral of symplectic form will be zero. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, first of all, I claim that the space of uh, uh, embedded annular is naturally infinite dimensional affine symplectic space. Why it's so? If you have annulus, uh, annulus, I don't know how to know. Okay. Uh, if you get uh, Annulus, which belong to space of annulae. Uh, first, forget about this condition. The tangent space is given to uh, one forms on this annul, uh, 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 one forms on the annulus locally, because uh, um, locally, if we get some 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 kind of like transversal piece in P three D form. Uh, uh, they differ by graph uh, locally by will be different graphs of of one form. Uh, yeah, so for example, this picture if you get two curves, then, the, uh, then one curve considers zero tangents uh, of uh, the phase cotangent bundle sets uh, zero sections, and another will be graph of one form. In fact, what you see is that kind of neighborhood of, of A is space of one form, one forms on annular uh, close to zero. We canonically parameterize this close uh, for given annulus, it can close, uh, close uh, uh, guys by one forms. And this condition means that consider one form with residue zero. It means one forms with residue zero. And this guy has a natural symplectic structure because if we have one form uh, alpha uh, and beta is raised equal to zero, you write, um, yeah, Frankel can introduce some local coordinates like uh, let's do in form power series, you get this space of one forms, it has a basis Cn, Zn, Dz over Z. And residue is equal to zero, which means you consider n non equal to zero part. Uh, th so the base consists of positive integers and negative integers. It's ne it has a natural pairing. And it does depend on choice of coordinate. Because if you have two one forms, the residue zero can write its a is something like df1, maybe a1, a2, that's df2. You consider uh, residue of f1, df2. And doesn't depend on if you ch ch add constant to f1, it uh, doesn't change residue. Yeah, so this um, mm. uh, space of annular with um, this condition will be naturally infinite dimensional symplectic space. Uh, now, uh, the space of uh, uh, annular which can be extended to disks, I claim it's naturally infinite dimensional Lagrangian subspace and given by some system of quadratic equations. Uh. Oh. 
for analysis to be uh, extend uh, extendable to disk. Uh, again, let's introduce local coordinates. If it's extendable to a disk, then we have uh, the following six. It's uh, 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 we can write equation that uh, let's uh, consider expressions which are linear along uh, uh, fibers of the foliation. This radius is zero because it's holomorphic form. And also get another equation that integral of y square oh, put x to uh, you get uh, two constraints. Of course you get more constraints. You get put y, y cube and so on. But uh, easy calculation shows that uh, these constraints are already sufficient and locally define you my con uh, condition that uh, this, this is glued to, th to the analysis. Mm. And then you can check that they are closed on the Poisson bracket. And you get Lie algebra. Uh, what is this Lie algebra here? Uh, Lie algebra is very easy. Uh, mm. kind of differential operators in of order at most one. It's not Virasor algebra, it's extension of Virasor algebra by uh, abelian currents, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, mm. and then by this general philosophy, we get quantization of this uh, infinite dimensional Lagrangian manifold. Yeah, I was cheating a little bit. Uh, in infinite dimensional story, uh, there, there is some little problem because uh, I, I recall that when I consider this canonical quantization, I put uh, this um, normalized product x of dx plus dx of x, and this thinks it's uh, kind of um, doesn't really make sense in infinite dimension. So there is some ambiguity by central extension, and it turns out that again this situation is kind of canonically fixed this ambiguity. You really go to uh, uh, the same Lie algebra of operators in mm. Mm. with some central uh, in infinite dimensional space. Yeah, so you in this case you uh, quantize this uh, Lagrangian uh, 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 manifold. Uh, oh. Yeah, so it's another origin of name where I call this Eddy structure. Uh, the, the situation is the following. If you think about this geometry, uh, this all, uh, if you get such curve is one, one order of tangency, uh, locally it introduces canonical coordinates. For any, uh, for any disk, this is unique up to sort root of one. Uh, uh, canonical local coordinates. Uh, such that uh, this uh, disk is given by equation uh, x is equal to y squared, uh, form is standard, and foliation is by x equal to constant. Yeah, so this uh, will be completely canonical standard picture. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Why it is uh, so? Uh, now, for example, if you get a, if you get a curve, uh, uh, this disk, you can calculate for each uh, a vertical fiber the area of uh, uh, the disk bounded by real disk bounded by piece of this uh, my complex piece and piece of vertical fiber. You get something like x to the power of three halves. Then I introduce coordinate x by taking uh, two third power of this guy, and consider middle point. It will be uh, Horizontal coordinate, yeah. So, uh, so the thing has no local parameter. It's, it's all things. All the things looks canonically isomorphic. And uh, in fact, what happens if you consider the space of disks, 
it will be uh, locally looks like this Lie al standard Lie algebra X, uh, its principal homogeneous space of the infinite dimension group uh, associated to this free algebra. So the whole thing station is completely homogeneous. Could I just ask, what happened to the C2n that you started out with? What happened to the integer n? n is infinite. n is uh, kind of positive integers, set of positive integers. Because uh, this, this thing will have basis 1, 2, 3, minus 1, minus 1. This will be the basis of my. Uh, space of one form with the residue group to zero, it's infinite dimension split space, and this dimension is infinite. So is there some canonical infinite uh, Absolutely global 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 coordinate systems, x, i, y, i? Yes, yes, sure, yeah, because you, you get a, at every point you get canonical coordinates, you get uh, uh, called z is equal to y, and yeah, you just, that's it. The c is a compact curve? So a compact, no, no, not necessary. No. No, no, I consider just, it will be mm, not necessarily compact curve. Yeah, so now uh, what should I, should I do next? So I get this mm, mm, nice infinite dimensions, uh, symplectic kind of fine space. I get Lagrangian manifold, and wave functions will be, by the way, this tau functions for, for the simple, for this. Uh, it's called quantum gravity model, yeah. Mm. 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 Can you, can you um, elaborate on that? Ah, it's what's called Kantsevich Witten level tau function. Yeah, this is, yeah, no, th this, uh, uh, if you consider. Um, you, you mean your inter the integral? Yes, yes, exactly, yeah, it was. Okay, so it's yeah. a specific tau. It's this, uh, this very specific tau and uh, specific coordinates, yeah. Mm. Now let's assume that my curve is uh, ah so suppose now I have a curve, global curve, global spectral curve, sitting in the surface, and uh, said that it's uh, 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 touch the uh, leaves of relation finitely many points and touch uh, once. Some it's called ramification points. And assume that sigma is compact. I will explain later how to do non-compact curves. Yeah. Mm. Uh, then, um, and I try to move the spectral curve. Uh, when I try to move the spectral curve, uh, 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 the set of parameters will be equal to the genus of a uh, spectral curve. And I get what I get, g-dimensional Lagrangian submanifold in first cohomology, which is CPG. Uh, mm, uh, actually, it's a natural Lagrangian manifold not in the vector space, but in a fine space. Uh, when I move a little bit the curve, uh, the deformation given by holomorphic one form, which is g-dimensional space, it's, it's Lagrangian subspace in first cohomology, so it will be tangent space to uh, this Lagrangian manifold. And uh, yeah, so I get some complicated uh, uh, transcendental Lagrangian submanifold in a fine space. And I claim that this, uh, this transcendental Lagrangian manifold is obtained by Hamiltonian reduction for this infinite dimension well one uh, in completely elementary manner. <coughs> Namely, what you do? So it's good. 
parameter space of embedded of deformations of sigma significant s. This will be this Lagrangian manifold called I don't know something L sigma. Uh, can be uh, 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 realized is the following thing. First, we deform. Uh, let's make. Mm, uh, uh, let's consider the small annuli around each things. It will be sits in the product, and then we embed the whole space in the space of embedded annuli of all ramification points. Of this universal space. Uh, mm. of annuli uh, such that uh, integral of residues equal to zero. It's it's product of n copies of infinite dimensional symplectic space. And it's con then it contains two pieces. First, it contains a product of copies of universal kind of area infinite dimensional Lagrangian, which says that I can extend it uh, inside thing. And another thing uh, says that I can extend it outside on the complement to disks. And uh, what, uh, what I consider, I consider space of uh, one forms on surface, maybe m minus small disks around uh, uh, containing this point zero i. And with the property that residue, residue is uh, uh, 0. For any i, integral around r i is this constraints. Yeah, so I get this infinite dimensional uh, symplectic manifold contains Lagrange manifold and this guy. And the intersection is my uh, uh, space of embedded curves. Now, what is the second guy? The second guy, it's easy to see, it's quasi-isotropic subspace. Uh, it's a fine quasi-isotropic subspace. Quasi-isotropic means it contains Lagrangian. And... Mm. It means that it contains Lagrangian. It's bigger than Lagrangian. Uh, so it contains skew, uh, if consider it will be Poisson sub variety, I suppose. It's, uh, uh, so the skew orthogonal to the tangent space will contain in the tangent space. It contains its skew orthogonal. Mm. And then, uh, <coughs> no, this is finite dimensional. This are both infinite dimensional. Yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. For example, if this uh, <coughs> uh, Lagrange has dimension infinity, say, yeah, then the dimension of quasi-isotropic will be infinity plus g. The integral there, you have some y dx, some some meromorphic one form. Or something ah, local. No, 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 no. Locally, near each point, you get uh, coordinates y x, and you say that the integral of y dx is equal to zero. It's mm. I consider any one form whose differential is two form. Uh, it does. It, it really doesn't depend on the sense of local coordinates. Uh, and um, then the story is the following: if you if you get uh, um, in, in general, if we get symplectic affine space, we get Lagrangian manifold, which is quantized. And we get quasi-atropic affine subspace, we can make Hamiltonian reduction. You can see the intersection of Lagrangian with quasi-atropic, project to symplectic quotient, get Lagrangian manifold in small affine space. And it will be automatically uh, quantized. You just write uh, like usual form of wave function integrals. It all makes sense. And in this case, you get quantization of this uh, finite dimensional story which is a uh, modular space of some non-compact three-dimensional Calabi-Yaus, by the way. Uh, the space of spectral curves, it's kind of mm, it's special case of three-dimensional Calabi-Geometry, which is used to one-dimensional geometry, where periods are used to periods of curves. 
uh, namely, if you have spectral curve, you consider what's called conic bundle. You consider write uv equal equation of sigma in, in surface. Uh, you, you get kind of C star bundle outside of uh, sigma and a degenerate coordinate cross along sigma. It all together will be non-compact Calabi-Aus refold, which fiber to a surface and its periods are essentially periods of this mm. spectral curve. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, all the story. And uh, yeah, so now relation to topological recursion, it's uh, mm. the following one. Uh, even before doing this reduction, uh, What we get? Uh, we get product of copies in this universal space. Mm. Uh, we get this quasi-tropic subspace, uh, and, uh, and mm, uh, Tropic affine subspace in kind of one forms on on sigma minus you know, fish points is basically equal to zero. It's a fine sp uh, 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 and then you can choose a Lagrangian subspace here. Lagrangian again a fine subspace. Uh, uh, and I want this Lagrangian subspace to be transversal to my product of these guys. <coughs> to product of copies of this unit of this area Lagrangian subvariety. Mm. Mm. Why I need it? Because I rec recall you that when I wrote this in coordinates y and x. I have this Lagrangian cone. I kind of take point and split uh, tangent space into Lagrangian pieces. I need this uh, uh, auxiliary splitting uh, to, to write uh, mm, local coordinates. And this uh, choice of this uh, transverse Lagrangian subspace is, is actually the same as uh, choice of finite dimensional Lagrangian subspace in first cohomology of my surface. G, which is transversal <coughs> to uh, space of holomorphic forms. Yeah, so you can see this called big cell in Lagrangian Gassmannian. Uh, uh, these things are equivalent to the choice of Bergman kernel uh, in, uh, uh, in classical language. Uh, <coughs> It's equivalent to the choice of omega. It's not unique choice. Uh, omega zero two, which will be two four, uh, will be uh, mm, uh, kind of. Uh, it's actually not two form. It's something locally looks like u z one d z two on on curve squared minus diagonal uh, and with second order pole. Diagonal and symmetric. <coughs> ah, so the subset of choice and cohomology is actually some nice analytic object on the square of curve. It's, mm, uh, this is one of the gradient in in um, a recursion. And then, because we split this all coordinates, we produce a lot of tensors S, G, N for 
g equals 0 n greater than 3 and g equals 1 n equals 1 in symmetric n powers of uh, mm, mm, of this big uh, uh, Lagrangian subspace. And which sits in symmetric nth power of the space of one forms on sigma. And these are exactly S gens which are produced by uh, topological recursion uh, through this mysterious formula, but uh, I'll explain to you all, mm. all the logic. It's really totally el elementary. It's exactly what topological recursion gives. <coughs> Mm -hmm. So could you say again what that uh, blackboard bold L stands for? It's Lagrangian affine subspace. Yeah, so, it, uh, so it's, uh, uh, it's a certain subspace in the space of one forms on a punctured curve. Uh, it's countable dimensional. And uh, what it consists of, it consists of one forms is raised equal to zero. In such that, let's say, integrals over A cycle cycle to zero. Uh, if we choose, uh, like, one of usual this Bergman kernels. Mm. The space is third type different. Yeah, uh, yeah, not all. It, it, but you put also some uh, uh, conditions that certain integrals over, so over half of cycles equal to vanish, vanishes. That's a normalization. Normalization, yes, that's exactly. Yeah. Uh, mm. Yeah, so uh, what happens in real life, it's a little bit more uh, tricky. I assume that my uh, surface is compact, and it's uh, kind of uh, not realistic uh, condition. In real life, you get some polynomials. Uh, what happens in real life? Let's consider surface is cotangent bundle to some curve. Uh, it will be only kind of uh, original, OK? It contains some original surface, which is not compact. Then I compactify this cotangent bundle. For example, if it's cotangent bundle to the curve, you compactify by adding uh, uh, pointwise fiber to infinity. It will be not symplectic manifold. Symplectic form, form will have pole of order 2. You can put it say. And the spectral curve goes some, somehow to this thing. Now you start to make blow ups. And you start to make blow ups, uh, uh, um, then you, uh, you, what you can achieve is the following situation. Uh, not always, but uh, kind of uh, generically, you can achieve the following. After blow ups, uh, uh, it could be some irregular singularity. You get uh, divisors when form has pole of high order, not necessarily two. It could be very big order. But uh, what can um, and divisors when omega has pole of order k one, mm. and eventually you, what you can achieve that spectral curve will transfer intersect transversely. Uh, this guy. But what is uh, nice, this foliation, which you can uh, extend, typically ex will be tangent to this foliation, will be tangent to divide to infinity. It's kind of, it looks strange, because in the original picture, it's transversal foliation to the device infinity. But when you start to make blow-ups, it has tendency to, to be tan uh, tendency to be tangent. If you make many, many blow-ups, it's usually tangent. And so we get kind of such picture then uh, you get, again, some local coordinates. Now, uh, maybe I should introduce coordinates, something like x, y. Foliation will be x equal to constant. Uh, but form will be uh, uh, whatever, dx, dy, by y to power k. Uh, so form will have some, uh, in some local coordinates this form. Uh, And the whole story repeats. Uh, one should um, consider deformation uh, 
preserving this tangency point. And in fact, you can see deformation preserving some k minus one jet of this uh, this thing. Mm. So the picture is the following. So you get compact curve. And uh, besides this uh, um, ramification points, which are not present in, in this neighborhood at infinity, it will have also some kind of uh, other points, um, pole points, pj. Uh, points where uh, sigma intersect uh, transversally devices of poles of my form omega. And then I get certain multiplicity kj greater than 1. It's with not on one point, many points. And in this case, one can introduce, uh, uh, kind of modify uh, slightly the picture. I'll say what will be kind of one dimension, uh, instead of finite dimensional cohomology, kind of uh, it will be replaced by a kind of tricky space. You can see that. Uh, It's, it's yeah, one can say it's more elementary, but uh, you can see that uh, um, what is drum cohomology? You can see that mm, locally uh, <laughs> functions, homomorphic functions, and forms. But now consider functions which vanish at my points with certain multiplicity. It's a, it will be a shift. Maybe the drum differential goes to one forms, which can poles. And this uh, hypercomology are symplectic vector space of dimension uh, 2g plus two sum of ki minus 2. So we get uh, uh, something like symplectic, uh, again, uh, like homology of clo closed surface with symplectic pairing. And uh, the whole story mm. Mm. repeats, essentially. And uh, one get, uh, mm. yeah, so I introduce a kind of different affine. Uh, uh, when I introduce this quasi-tropic space, I can see the f forms which, uh, mm. which allow to have poles of up to given order at these points instead of regular forms, essentially. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, it covers really most, essentially, all practical examples uh, when I get poles and regular singularities mm -hmm. and so on. Okay, thank you. Huh? F first, you assume that all, uh, <coughs> all ramification points are of, of order one. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, no, the whole story. Can you yes, I think so, yeah. Uh, yeah, it will be no longer this uh, uh, locally homogeneous drum because when you get triple tangents, it will get already some uh, continuous parameters. Um, I didn't really uh, thought carefully, but it, it looks as if considered as a limit of uh, uh, things with two tangents points, it will whole thing extends to this yes, limit. Indeed, we proved that uh, yeah. the political recursion is now commutes with the limit. Limit, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and also I would, would like to say that it's um, in uh, there is this um, thing here which is present. It's foliation. It plays absolutely no role in constructing of Calabiao, and m uh, my guess it's uh, the thing. It's then it doesn't depend on the foliation. It will be the symplectic invariance. Uh, yeah. In the choice of foliation is like the choice of polarization. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But. Um, but again, string theory says it's, it's Lagrangian manifold given by period mapping should be quantized in some unique way, which really uh, for which relations plays no role. Yeah, so it, yeah. I guess that some of the people <coughs> have been lost. Yeah. Oh, um, too bad. Yeah. Uh, so maybe uh, can, can you just um, uh, illustrate uh, the uh, uh, this construction to I in the simplest case? Yeah. Uh, the Kontevich model. Y is equal to x uh, squared. 
Uh, yeah, no, this is this calculation which uh, it's, it's exactly this calculation of this universal. Uh, in principle, I can, yeah, but. Um, yes, no, I can write as various sort of generators, but it's, I don't know if it's help. Uh, no, no, I, I wrote uh, this uh, things abstractly. This. This is what uh, perhaps uh, will uh, help people to understand. If yes, 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 okay. Uh, mm. This example of the following: you get this coordinate x and y, this relation, and uh, on my um, this disk will be it will be with some coordinate z and uh, embedded to c. So there is coordinate x and y. Z goes to uh, z is square. So. Uh, no. X is the square. Yeah, I get the symbolic of the disk, but uh, uh, now I want to move a little bit this disk. Yeah, and if I move the disk, uh, uh, yeah, first I move annulus. Mm, so it means that uh, if you consider one form. will be one form with residue is equal to zero on the disk, yeah? I have this one form on this disk with residue zero. You make one form. Uh, how I move it? Uh, I have a map z goes to e is equal to z square, but y will be z plus um, uh, derivative. I, I think it will be Then maybe I divide by 2z because I uh, go to. Yeah, so I get uh, this condition. And then uh, it's something which depends on this uh, parameters a n. And now I write conditions that residue of x uh, k uh, y dx. If I take pullback is equal to zero, so I think I get uh, maybe half of uh, negative variables is equal to zero. Uh, yeah, let's see check it's, it's a bit complicated. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh, yeah, it's maybe a to power. Minus two k is equal to zero. I get exactly this condition. But now, if you write equation that's x square x k y square equal to the x equal to zero, uh, then I get system of quadratic equations, uh, which means that minus a. Just substitute the square, I get quadratic equations in A. You get system of quadratic equation, and, and this system of quadratic equations is um, uh, you can check directly that it gives exactly uh, Lie algebra of which I considered and 
it's going to put head, heads here get the algebra of uh, apparatus and, and extension of Virasora. Could I generalize Ivan's question? Yeah. It's the fundamental question, which for me is the obstacle to understand TR. Huh? For a given C, okay, for this C, for this uh, uh, curve, yeah, area you, curve, you, yeah. You, the thing that you're generating yeah, is, then, is, is the intersection in this C. Yes, but sure. How do you know for any given curve what you are generating? No, I, I don't speak about generic indices. What I say is that. At the end of the day, um, for a curve, first I get uh, some quantizes, some huge infinite dimensional Lagrangian submanifold somewhere in this product of Hil standard Hilbert spaces. But then I can make, uh, for, for me, that's kind of the goal of the thing will be, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not every application of topological recursion, but to, to um, the um, equation. <laughs> Here for every curve, is nothing to speak about holomorphic anomaly equation in, in, in sense, yeah, but... Uh, 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 it's just, uh, if I understand the principle of it, yeah. it's, uh, you want to get relations between certain uh, enumerative topological <coughs> invariants, maybe no. like the moduli space or something like that, and that's mm. what these equations are telling you. But how do you know which... No, is that I don't know. No. Invariants yeah. you're speaking about? No. No, I, I don't uh, th thinking about this interpretation. I just about the structure of this whole story. That all this S G N or omega G N, which construct with topological recursion, what I said that it's just a quanti canonical quantization of certain infinite dimensional Lagrange manifold given by quadratic equations. That's it. So you don't care about the interpretation. You, you don't care about interpretation. No, no. For me, that's the um, first basic trouble. Why, by this topological recursion, you get symmetric tensors? A priori gets tens of symmetric it's all where all indices except one. And then the, by induction you prove kind of residue, whatever things that it's symmetric. And it was for me not satisfactory explanation and uh, reduced to this general Lie algebra question story. Okay. Okay. A question I saw. At the beginning you said that when you quantize x, y, you did you choose the, the symmetric quantization. Yes, yes. Did, uh, yeah. It's invariant under a fine symplectic transformation. Yeah, th 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 okay. yeah, that's it. Can you say that this is uh, um, a formulation of the quasi classical uh, yeah. one dimensional complexified yeah. qu quasi classical one dimensional motion? So you yeah. have the, the turning points, which are the. No, no, it's. <laughs> No, that I don't know. Uh, yeah, no, it's a, mm, yeah, there are various questions. We can quant quantize spectral curve itself, yeah. And uh, uh, things are different in relation with topological recursion, but I still don't understand it uh, geometrically, I have to say. Uh, what I quantize, uh, uh, mm, it's modular space of spectral curves. And uh, now what we thought uh, with Jan that the relations should be roughly the following. If you get spectral curve, and you want to quantize it, double KB. So at some point, you should get double KB expansion. Uh, how to interpret it? Um, maybe you should add vertical fiber, curve, curve plus vertical fiber. We degenerate spectral curve. And if you deform it a little bit, you, you get a smooth spectral curve. The whole, whole story works for smooth curves, not for singular one. So you can see that it's as a li uh, um, um, s uh, and one of the parameters of this limiting curve will be position of the point on the spectral curve. Yeah, so it means that it's a uh, spectral curve itself. We can consider some kind of point on the limit of modular space of spectral curve of uh, with different degrees when you add these vertical fibers. And uh, presumably this uh, quantization which came from this uh, uh, more parameter space of spectral curves will go in position of spectral curve itself. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a picture. And you can put, actually, sh should put several points, not one point, but several, because when you try to deform, the sum of residues should be zero. So it should put arbitrary number of vertical fibers. And uh, then parameter space will be extended by number of points minus one. And then presumably you get the things like uh, wave functional symmetric powers of spectral curves, which 
don't talk about here. Yeah. 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 Sorry? Hopf, hopf? No. No. No, it's very primitive geometry, no, nothing. Last thing, you, you mentioned your tau function for the airy case. Yeah. Is there always a tau function? Yeah, for this double uh, 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 tangency points, oh, it's the I think it's, uh, I haven't really thought, but the, uh, the whole the geometry it looks like Sato Grassmannian, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, it's, uh, presumably it's some kind of. Mm, no, I don't know, in fact, <laughs> I have to say. Yeah. Star function, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the, uh, we, uh, the physicists, uh, yeah. we can imagine uh, the following. Uh, yeah. Physical interpretation of this quantization. Yeah. You have a Gaussian field on the Riemann surface. Yes, yes. And then you apply, uh, and uh, you, um, uh, and this should be globally defined. Yeah. And you apply the Virasoro constraints, Virasoro yeah. conditions yeah. Um, at each branch point. Yeah. And then you glue, uh, you glue the solution, yeah. the variable solution, yeah. and you obtain the. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, one can think about it like. Now, the geometry of the story is very familiar. It's what always happens in conformal field theory. You get some punctures, you get things uh, complement. Yeah. And did you look at the Hitchin case, Hitchin system? Uh, no, but this space of Sperkovs is the base of Hitchin yeah, yeah, system. <laughs> in the sense, it's already looking on it yes. yeah, from the very beginning. 